When I first saw this tree, I fell in love with it. I think it's the most beautiful tree I have ever seen. The bark, the shiny leaves, the flowers, and the fruit. Now the fruit is absolutely unique. This is Punica granatum, the pomegranate tree from the Lytraceae family. The pomegranate has grown in popularity since the discovery of its antioxidant properties that make it a superfood with many health benefits. But the pomegranate has been known for a very long time. It is a fruit with diverse cultural and religious significance with many symbolisms, love, fertility, prosperity. And this dates back to Greek mythology. Indeed, it beholds great significance in the myth of Persephone where Hades tricks her with pomegranate seeds. And still today, in Greece, it is conventional when you buy a new home for a house guest to bring a pomegranate as a first gift, as it is a sign of prosperity, fertility, abundance, and good luck. First, let's observe this magical fruit and where it comes from. The pomegranate tree is native to Iran, but nowadays it's cultivated all over the world. And some pomegranate trees have lived up to 200 years old. Now the branches have long sharp thorns that are not visible at first, but if you steal a fruit, you will discover them very soon. <laughs> and this is exactly why plants use these kind of mechanisms. It's as a protection for their very precious fruit against animal predators. Now, there are three botanical terms that describe this tissue modification. Thorns, spines, and prickles. Now, thorns, such as these, are modified branches or stems. And as examples, you have the hawthorn, obviously, citrus trees, locusts, pericanta. Now spines are modified leaves, and you can find them on plants such as acacias, the date palm tree, or uh, a lot of cacti plants have them. Now the last one, prickles. What are prickles? Well, they are modified epidermis tissue. And the best example for this are rose bushes. And yes, roses don't have thorns, they have prickles. Now, let's take a look at the leaves. The leaves are opposite, which means that they are one in front of another on the branch. And they are deciduous. Now deciduous means that a tree loses its leaves in the winter season. Now have you ever wondered why trees actually do this? Basically, with less sunlight and colder temperatures, the tree doesn't have a use for its leaves that will only photosynthesize with a certain amount of sunlight. So what it does is it, it saves its energy by cutting off the leaves and storing all its nutrients in the roots. And this way it protects itself against bad weather conditions such as harsh winds, cold temperatures, frost. Basically it's minimizing damage. So it's pretty smart really. Okay, let's take a look at the flower. 
It's so beautiful and has such a vibrant color. Wow. So the flower has a hard structure uh, that envelops the petals. We call this the hypanthium. Basically, it's where the calyx, the corolla and the stamens form a cup-shaped tube that contain the nectaries, which are the glands that produce the nectar. And just to make things clear, the calyx is the group of sepals, the corolla is the group of petals, and the stamens are the male organs. Wow, perfect, so many fruit. <gasps> okay, so now let's take a look at the fruit. Okay, so technically this is a berry. And now what is a berry? A berry is a fleshy fruit without a stone that comes from the ovary of a single flower. And so you can see here that we have the residual calyx and the residual stamens from the flower. The outer layer of the fruit is called the exocarp. And if we open the fruit up, so here we have exocarp, and here we have the mesocarp. Okay, and the exocarp and the mesocarp form the pericarp. And what you see here in yellow, sort of uh, the membranous part, is called the endocarp. So exo outside, meso middle, and endo in. So it makes sense. The seeds, they're beautiful. And I call them jewel seeds because they literally look like little jewels when you open the fruit up and see all these pink little jewels, it's, they're so beautiful. So these seeds have a fleshy coating. And that's the part we eat. All these little seeds, we call them arils. And let me try it by one. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Juicy, sugary, pretty good. Mmm. Now, pomegranates are said to be the healthiest fruit. They can be eaten raw or juiced. So they're low in fat and calories, but they are high in proteins, fiber, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals. It's packed with goodness. Really, there's not a healthier fruit. And so what this means is that it's great for boosting your gut health, your heart, your immune system. It's got anti-inflammatory properties, anti-cancer properties. It's, it's just incredible. And now you can understand why it's called a superfruit. And it's delicious. It's just, it's so magical. I, I absolutely adore this fruit. It's, and I adore the tree, so it's just, it's, it's incredible. Uh, the pomegranate has also other uses. Uh, pomegranate seed extracts are used in cosmetics for skin care and also for their sweet fragrance. And also, the root bark produces uh, black ink that can be used to uh, tan leathers. And of course, let us not forget its highly decorative property. I mean, it's wonderful. Here in Mallorca, it's used in hedges, uh, so it's got multiple purposes. It serves as a barrier, uh, it produces shade, and it produces food. Now, there's so much more to say about the pomegranate in general, but um, this would be a super long video, and I just want to give you a taste of the pomegranate for you to see how incredible this tree actually is. So I hope you enjoyed the video, 
and uh, I hope you love the pomegranate tree as much as I love it. Uh, and I will see you in the next video with the next plant. Bye!